Dungeons and Dragons is cool now. And by that I mean more people than ever are playing D&D, and it's more socially acceptable to admit it now than ever before. Mainstream media like Stranger Things and live play shows like Critical Role and Dimension 20 have a lot of people curious about whether or not they want to try rolling some dice with friends. Of course, deciding to play D&D and actually starting to play D&D are two different animals. You have to find a group which can be a massive hurdle depending on your area and your social circle. Plus, it's a complicated game. I mean, it literally has textbooks. If you're interested in trying D&D but are nervous about jumping in, or if you yourself are a seasoned player but you find yourself introducing others to the game, then this video is for you. Seven tips for giving newbies advantage on their gameplay check. That's a... it's a D&D... never mind, you'll get it later. I want to start by touching briefly on the issue of finding a game. This is the question I get asked the most, and unfortunately I am just not the person to answer it. All my home games have been with friends who either already play or were already interested in starting. I just have no experience here. But from what I can tell, there are three main ways to find a group. One, you can play with friends. Put the word out to your pals that you're interested in playing, and you might find that some others have been considering the same thing. You can even start a group with all new players and learn together. Two, you can visit your local gaming store and see if they have tabletop game nights, can connect you with anyone putting together a group, or host Adventurers League games. Or three, you can use the internet to either find local games looking for players or pick up an online game. You can use Facebook groups, subreddits like rlfg, or just post on your social media that you're looking to join a game. Honestly, finding a D&D group is a little like dating. Sometimes you get lucky and you meet the right one really early on, but other times you really gotta just do some trial and error to find the right fit. If there's a cheat code, I'm afraid I don't know it. But once you do find or create a group, there are seven things you can do to make sure you have the best possible experience. First things first, try not to panic over the rules. I know they can be overwhelming. Even experienced players and DMs have to look things up sometimes. No one is expecting you to memorize all of the rules for your first session. Or if they are, they're an asshole and you can ignore them. Your first session will be easier though if you have a basic understanding of how the game works going into it. I would encourage you to pay attention to your own learning style here. Some people will get a lot out of reading the player's handbook, but others might not really grasp anything until they see it in play at the table. You may want to look up some YouTube videos that explain the basic rules of play, or that guide you through how your specific class works. Personally, I learned most of the rules from watching D&D actual play shows, where I got to see them in use. Whatever works for you is the right choice. It's important to understand that the rules are there to facilitate the gameplay, not to define it. You don't have to know, say, how much damage you take if you fall a great distance, or what to roll in order to look for animal tracks. All you have to do is say, I jump out the window, or I want to look for animal tracks, and your DM will tell you what to roll. Your DM is the ultimate arbiter of the rules. Don't be afraid to ask them clarification questions, both outside and inside of the game. In fact, there will be times when your DM will override whatever's in the rulebook and make their own call. The rules of D&D can be, and often are, broken, so seriously, don't stress about learning them all. It'll come with time. Whatever character you end up creating, you will spend hours and hours at session after session inhabiting them, so you'd better pick one that you like. This can vary from table to table, but from what I've seen online and in person, the average D&D session is something like three to five hours. And unless something gets in the way of the game, it's not unusual to play a single character every week or every other week for years. So ask yourself, what makes you feel excited to play? Magic? Big swords? Being a rich noble? Having a tiny pet dragon? This can be different difficult to pin down if you aren't familiar with D&D in general, so I think this is another big argument for flipping through the rulebooks or watching some videos online before you nail down those choices. It's very important that you work with your DM to make sure that your character is a good fit for the game and for you. Be forewarned, many DMs will suggest that new players stay away from spellcasting classes, because if you're already learning the rules of the game, stacking the rules of spellcasting on top can make it much harder. Every DM is going to be different with how they want to handle stuff like this. A good good DM will listen if you tell them what kinds of themes and concepts excite you, and help you figure out how to work those into a character that still suits the campaign and your experience level. 
If you've never roleplayed before, this part of the game can be really intimidating. Many of us haven't played pretend in many, many years, and it can feel very vulnerable to do it in front of other people. On top of that, representations of D&D in media can give us unrealistic expectations for what roleplay looks like. If you're comparing yourself to a bunch of professional actors, of course you're gonna be nervous. But on a basic level, roleplay is just asking yourself, what would my character do in this circumstance? And then doing that. D&D is not like a video game. It's not like there are preset options to choose between. You can truly do pretty much anything, or at least you can try. If a door is locked, you don't have to find a key. You can pick the lock, you can break it down, you can light it on fire. Combat is a little more structured and you should pay attention to the details in, say, a spell description. But don't be afraid to ask your DM if you can use your abilities in a creative way. Most DMs will respect the rule of cool and let you try unconventional things. You're gonna have the most fun if you make big moves. The best characters to play and to play with are the ones who take Take action instead of just sitting back and waiting for things to happen to them. This isn't real life. You don't have to be cautious. Take some risks and I promise you'll have a more exciting game. Of course, taking risks means that sometimes you fail, and that's a key part of the game too. Some of the most fun and memorable D&D moments come from times when things go horribly wrong or completely off the rails. Try to remember that failure and chaos are opportunities, and they don't have to make the game less fun. Go with the flow and stay open to whatever direction things take. You said you wanted to know how your favorite game masters create expansive worlds with in-depth histories? Yes! How do they keep track of everything? And how do they organize it so they can find what they need during games? Are they just geniuses? No, they just have a secret. They They're aliens wearing people suits. I knew it. They use World Anvil's new chronicles. Oh, sorry. Jump the gun there. I know World Anvil is a world building platform, but what's Chronicles? It's a feature that allows users to connect timelines and maps, creating a visual representation of events in your world's history. But what's this about aliens in people suits? Oh, just a dumb theory I had, forget it. Anyway, can I still use Chronicles if my world doesn't have a long history? Absolutely. You define the scale of your timelines, so you can log events over the course of centuries or hours. Like if you want to keep track of what your big bad has been doing in the background while your party adventures. And my players can't see it? Not if you don't want them to. World Anvil's privacy tools let you decide who sees what. Wow, I can't wait to try it out. Oh, you won't be trying it out. You mean because it's only for Master Tier subscribers and above? That's okay. I can use the code Ginny to get 40% off my annual subscription. No, it's because you know too much. How did she guess that? We were so careful. Listen, I have ADHD, so I get it. Sitting still for five hours and keeping focus is hard on some days and impossible on others, even when you're passionate about the game. But you've got to do your best to stay engaged because I guarantee you, you will hate D&D if you're not really paying attention. It's absolutely not the kind of game that you can play halfway. Plus, being checked out during the game is rude to your DM and your fellow players, and it will impact their enjoyment of the game. So put your phone away or put it on the aptly named D&D mode. If having something to fidget with helps you focus, communicate with your DM over that so that they know that you're not being distracted or rude if you're knitting or doodling. And if you need a break to pee or stretch or step outside, ask for one. I find it easiest to stay engaged by actively participating. Plus, D&D isn't very fun if you stay silent for everything but your turn in combat. Get involved, voice your ideas, and take action. And when you're not actively involved, you can stay plugged in by taking notes or planning ahead. By the time it comes to your turn in combat, you should have a good idea of what you're doing. If you're casting a spell, read the whole thing first. Not only is this stuff basic courtesy to the rest of the people at your table, it'll also make the game more enjoyable for you. The more you can communicate with your DM and the rest of your party before the game starts, the better. First of all, they should know that you're a beginner. Not every game is right for a first-time D&D player. Plus, if they know you're new to the game, they can support you throughout the process of creating your character and playing your first few sessions. It's important to know what kind of game you're getting into, particularly when building your character. If this is a group that really demands a smart build, your DM can help you pick a race, class, and stats that will allow you to be effective. If not, you can make choices based more on on story and what sounds fun. But whatever the style of the group is, you'll want to match your build to that. Also, the other player characters are going to be your character's companions throughout their adventures, so it's a good idea to get to know them and think about how your character will connect with the others. Remember, you're not the main character of D&D. 
This is a collaborative storytelling game, and you're part of a team. Less Iron Man, more Avengers. Communication out of character can help facilitate better in-character interactions. 95% of problems that come up at D&D tables can be solved by talking with each other. That's real science. It's not. I just made it up. But it's an informed guess. People often ask what they should get or buy before playing D&D. Which books, how many dice, what sort of accessories. And I know it's tempting to buy every single D&D item. My first six months playing D&D, I hauled this massive overstuffed tote bag to every session. Books, character journals, spell cards, rolling tray minis, and condition rings, and trackers, and inspiration coins, and of course, a big old bag of dice. You know what I bring to D&D now? This. <laughs> Honestly, you don't need much. All you really need is a set of dice, and even that can be replaced with a digital dice roller on your phone or computer, or provided by your DM or a fellow player if you're not ready to commit to collecting items for a game that you don't know if you love yet. You don't even need the player's handbook, really. It can be a great reference once you learn to navigate it, but someone else in your group probably has a copy you can borrow, and you can also Google nearly anything, like what is a short rest, or can I cast a spell with a bonus action, or whatever. Just don't forget to tack that 5e onto to the end so you don't end up on government watch lists for googling something like, can you instantly kill a person who is asleep? Oops. If your first session is amazing, that is great, and I am so happy for you. But if it isn't, that doesn't mean D&D isn't for you. Maybe you need a little more practice to feel comfortable in character. Maybe the rules are overwhelming and you need a few more sessions to really get the hang of them. Maybe you're playing with the wrong group. There are more than 50 million D&D players worldwide, and the more time I spend in this community, the more I understand that every single one of those millions of tables plays D&D differently. Sometimes I hear things that make me question if we can even truly say we're playing the same game. It's very, very important to find a group that you vibe with. The wrong group can turn a person off of D&D for life. Everyone prefers different stuff, so a group doesn't even have to be a bad group for it to be the wrong group for you. Even if your first session isn't exactly what you want, if the idea of playing tabletop games is exciting to you, be patient and try it a few times in a few ways or try a few different games before you give up. There might be a group out there that wants the exact same kind of game that you want, and if not, maybe you can create one. Now, mine is not the kind of channel where you're going to get deep dives into class mechanics or anything, but if you want to learn more about roleplay and character creation, check out this playlist of advice for players. It covers everything from how to give your character a personality to how to speak up more if you're shy. Someone asked me to leave a few seconds of silence at the end of the video so they have time to click on the thing that I linked, but that's bad for retention. Sorry.